Hi, I'm Rick. And today I want to talk a little bit about what you do to initially set up a real-time automation controller or RTAC. And I've got one here and I want to talk a little bit about what comes in the box as well. So the SEL RTAC family includes devices as big as a uh, full-blown substation or a commercial RTU and it's called the Axion clear down to the SEL 3505 which could be on a pole top and there's many devices in between I encourage you to go to the website and, and check them out so what comes in the box so I've got a unit right here this is the four port RTAC you get the USB B cable you'll need this to configure it and then of course there's the software CD software CD has the software that you need as well as the the instruction manual. The software is called Accelerator RTAC and it's a configuration software to build the projects needed to make the RTAC work. The software CD has a um, an auto run menu that pops up and if auto run is not enabled then you'll have to browse and I'll show you how to do that. The auto run menu has the software directly on it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on start and go to my computer and then I'm going to just basically browse to the DVD and then there's a setup.bat B-A-T double click on that and that'll run the setup file and that will give you the uh, the window so I'm going to run the software as the software installs it'll also install a driver the driver makes this USB cable act like a Ethernet cable so instead of having to configure the uh, the PC with Ethernet addresses and whatnot to configure to the RTAC you just plug the USB cable in and it automatically happens. So that's pretty slick. And the installation for the software uh, is, is very easy. It's just basically you click through everything, you agree to the agreement, just click on next, next. I don't want a quick launch shortcut, so I'm going to disable that and then press install and it will just install the software. Okay, so the software is finished, so I'll just click on finish here. Now the next thing to do is we're going to set up the initial configuration of the RTAC. And to do that, we're going to plug this USB-B cable into the front port. And all of the real-time automation controller families, no matter what size or what they look like, they all have this USB-B port. And all of this configuration is basically the same. So we're going to plug into the laptop USB. And if you have Windows XP, you may get a window that pops up that says, do you want Windows to search the internet for the driver? Click no, you do not want that to do that and then the next thing will say do you want Windows to automatically install the driver and say yes because the driver is installed on your PC. Windows 7 will just automatically install the driver so you don't have to do anything. After the software is complete we're going to open up a web interface and there's an IP address that is now fixed to be used with this USB B cable so the IP address is 172.29.131.1 so enter that into the browser and then you're going to notice that there's a, it says there's a security error. And what that's all about is the RTAC has an X509 certificate that's built in, but it's not signed because, because obviously it's just fresh out of the box. And so your IT group could make a signed certificate and load it in. But for now, we're just going to say continue on with the web and we're going to go to the next screen, which allows you to set up the initial admin username and password. The RTAC doesn't have a default username and password, and it doesn't have a backdoor username and password. NERC SIP requirements require you to have something that's totally clean and uh, something that somebody can't hack into later if they know more information. So there's, there's no password. So what we're going to do is set up the initial username and password. The initial password has to be a complex password, so that means it has to be at least eight characters, has to have uppercase and lowercase characters, as well as a number or two and also um, a special character. So what I'm going to do is make this SEL. It can be any password that you want. Just make sure to write it down and don't forget it because if you forget it, there is no backdoor, so you'll have to take the unit apart and reset it. So I'm going to submit that and it accepted it. So now we've made the initial username and password, so now we're going to log in using those credentials. So SEL and log in. And this is the RTX web interface. And this is where you configure usernames and passwords, you configure the uh, Ethernet addresses and, and a lot of other information I'll cover in another video. But the one thing that you may want to know right now is uh, if you click on interface then you can configure the IP addresses for the individual um, Ethernet ports and then you can remotely configure the unit. And that's pretty much it for this video. 
So I encourage you to visit the SEL website. And there's some other videos that we're going to be putting on there as well as the, uh, the flyers and data sheets and the instruction manual. Thanks a lot.